Do my checks, and then we'll see <laughs> okay. if anybody else hears it as well. Okay. So. Okay. It says you're live. It says I'm live, but the question is, can you hear me? Anyone? You can just keep talking. Okay. <laughs> I'm not sure if anyone can hear me. Jake, can you hear me? I don't have it up yet. Oh, okay. So he doesn't have it yet. So I'm not sure what's going on. Our microphone apparently is maybe having issues. Jay, can you hear me? I, I don't have it up yet. Just oh, keep, okay. I just keep talking. I'll, <laughs> okay. I'll let you know. All right. So uh, we'll try this. Okay. One. I can hear you. Okay. <laughs> All right. So uh, glad everyone can hopefully hear me now. Jay can hear me. So uh, hopefully everyone else can too. Uh, Jay is my husband. He is uh, the one who is moderating the chat comments. Uh, and if you have any questions about intermittent fasting, you can put those in the comments section now. Uh, and uh, so uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Kayla Cox. I have lost 80 pounds and kept it off using intermittent fasting, uh, mostly OMAD, one meal a day during that time. Uh, I eat whatever I want. I don't restrict any foods. I don't restrict, uh, I don't count calories. I don't restrict carbs. Um, I walk six miles a day. I'm the author of the laid back guide to intermittent fasting, which is available on Amazon. And uh, also I am the owner and founder of Slow and Steady Success Academy. So if you're looking to lose weight and, and you kind of feel overwhelmed by the whole thing, so much information out there, I get it. Um, I've created courses that take you step by step through the process. Um, and also we have a um, all access pass subscription available. And that also gets you access to our private Facebook group where I do a weekly group coaching session uh, on Facebook Live so that you can get all of your uh, questions answered there. So, uh, and also I've done over 150 videos now on YouTube. Uh, so you can search back through those. I've talked about a lot of different topics. So uh, let's get into some questions. Oh, one more thing. If you want to get an all access pass, you can get 20% off your subscription by using the promo code YTLive43. That's the number 43 after YTLive, like YouTube Live. Okay, so the first question comes from Kovari Sharma, and this is on the YouTube community tab. They asked, uh, have you interviewed anyone who has had success uh, with intermittent fasting for uh, P PCOS, so uh, polycystic ovary uh, syndrome? And um, I've not yet, um, I am working uh, out an interview time with uh, uh, Kimber, um, Kimberfit. Uh, some of you might know her um, or be familiar with her channel. Uh, she's great. Uh, we've, we had a time scheduled previously, and it just w didn't work out with her work schedule, but we're still trying to get together on a time. But I will tell you, you could go look at her YouTube videos. I'm not sure if she has talked about it extensively on her YouTube channel, but I know that she she does definitely talk about PCOS on her Instagram and she has lost, I, hmm, I can't remember the exact amount of weight. I don't want, I don't want to say it wrong, but it's, uh, I think 150 pounds. I think that's right. Uh, maybe somebody can correct me in the chat, but she is fantastic. We have very, very similar philosophies and everything. So, uh, check her channel out and, and check her Instagram out. Um, I I can't remember what her handle is. I think it might just be Kimberfit on um, on Instagram. Uh, Reshme Farah said, um, there might be a time where I'm going overseas and over there it's 12 hours difference from in America. How would I be able to adjust the time difference? Because in the States I would eat in the mornings and fast throughout the rest of the day. So how would you do that overseas? Well, um, I think that's a really interesting question. Um, and here's kind of my philosophy. He didn't mention if this was for business or if it was a vacation. When I'm on vacation, I'm on vacation and I really, a lot of times I don't do fasting at all. And I accept that I'll probably gain a few pounds, but you know what? I know how to lose the weight again. And to me, vacations are really important. It's a time to be with your family and, and to really enjoy everything that that place that you're going has to offer. Um, and so a little bit of weight gain, I'm okay with. I, I, it's a trade-off to me. Um, but it, but there have been vacations where I go and I just say, well, I'm just going to not eat until supper and have my one meal be supper. It kind of depends on the vacation. But um, 
But as far as, you know, just if you're really wanting to stick with it, because I understand if, if you're like right in the middle of weight loss and you really don't want to like take a break and you just want to keep with it. What I would say is probably you could, I mean, you could do it a couple different ways. If you are always doing uh, OMAD, let's say you eat in the morning and fast throughout the rest of the day. So uh, you could just say you're just going to skip a whole day, you know, like, or so it, it actually might be different. It would depend, let's see, if you're going backwards. So if you had breakfast here and then by the time you get overseas, uh, you know, like if it was, I would just try to keep that same schedule. In other words, like even if it meant either eating earlier or eating, you know, potentially a lot later, like, you know, going up to maybe a 48 hour fast. I should have done the math before I saw this question <laughs> beforehand, but you understand what I'm saying. Um, uh, that those are a couple of different options to try to keep it really consistent. Like I'm just going to keep eating breakfast every day, local time, basically. Um, that's one way of doing it. Um, but again, if it's just a vacation, I would just go and enjoy the vacation and, and, and you know, and, and do that on purpose. And then when I got back, I would just go back to it. Um, but you could certainly do it either way. Or, you know, if you found that you maybe want to have a window, like maybe right now you're doing OMAD, but you're saying, well, you know, I would like a little bit more freedom. You could have a window and then just set up your window based on, you know, how you're feeling when you get there. Take it easy on yourself, too. I mean, you got to remember, you're probably going to have jet lag. You're probably going to, you know, have a, a different kind of weird schedule. So keep all that in mind and be really uh, nice to yourself, too. So those are all of my suggestions. Hopefully that helps you. Um, uh, let's see. Ramona uh, Dickinson said, how do you maintain weight? Uh, still OMAD, but not as strict or a longer eating window. I don't think I will ever go back to eating from the time I get up to the time I go to bed, uh, but a little more than one meal a day would be comforting. And uh, Ramona, that's a great question because that's where I'm at right now. Um, I am, so at the end of 2016, that's when I got down initially to 157 and I decided for a year I was going to see if I could maintain it. I really had no idea if I could maintain. To my shock, I was able to easily maintain it. And during that time, I was I was really trying to be as loose and as free with my eating while at the same time maintaining my weight loss within a five pound range of, of the seven day average. So in other words, like from 157 up to 162, that I went that's where I wanted my seven day average to stay. Now um I found like just because that that basically for almost a whole year, I was trying to get a handle on like, what do I really like? Like, do I want to go back to eating, you know, three meals a day or more or, or, or what do I really want? And I found what I really prefer on most days is to just have supper be my fir first meal. And usually what I would do uh, that at that time, I would um, then have snacks afterwards, like um uh, popcorn. Me and my husband would have popcorn after the kids were in bed, which was a nice treat. Uh, you know, so I'd have supper and then I'd have popcorn. Um, and, or sometimes it'd be like goat cheese. Oh man, love marinated goat cheese. Uh, like just so good, uh, with like maybe crackers or something like that. Um, now fast forward, I, I then went back, uh, in 2017 when I started this channel, lost some more weight. And then I've been maintaining since I think October, maybe October, I think it was around October when I decided, okay, I'm done at losing weight again. So again, I'm, I'm back in that kind of, you know, I'm, I'm in an area where it's, you know, the maintenance phase, which is for the rest of my life. So I'm always looking for really like, what do I enjoy? What do I, what do I really want to do? Not just like, what do I know works, but like, what do I enjoy? I still find that most days I want to just do the one meal a day. Most days. There are occasions though where I like the fact that I can have a sandwich with Jay, you know, just like, hey, let's have lunch, you know. And there is great freedom, I think, that comes with it. Uh, you still have to 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 watch it, I think, um, as far as you have to continue or what what works for me is to continue to weigh and track my weight, track my seven day average, just because I want to keep it in that range. Um, and I find that as long as you're just paying attention, I, I think you'll you'll really be fine. And so if you find that you want to have, you know, a little bit more than one meal a day, eat, you know, 
one more, a little bit more than one meal a day. Do, do what you want to do and see if that works and then just keep tweaking it to get to get it to where you want it to be. And I'm still experimenting with all that. Um, so, yeah, this life's an experiment. Right. So. Uh, all right. Let's see. Uh, Amira Asby, I think. I pronounced that right, said, I reached my goal by doing intermittent fasting with an 18.6. So how do I maintain that without gaining weight? Well, that, that's pretty much the same kind of question. Um, you know, since you did an 18.6 and that helped you get down to a certain weight. Excuse me. Here's the thing about maintenance. It's the same, it's the same thing as with weight loss. There are a um, an infinite number of ways to do it and be successful at it. It's just a matter of having a plan and paying attention. And then if it's not working, tweak it so that it does work. Just don't let it get too far out of bounds. Um, you know, you could, I mean, I'm, I'm just going to throw out some ideas. You could just try doing an 18, six, you know, a few days a week and, and other days just eat, you know, on a regular schedule, see how that works for you. Or, you know, you might say, well, I enjoy, you know, the 18, you, it sounds to me like maybe you don't really want to maintain at an 18.6. Like you may, maybe a couple of different things might've happened. Maybe you got down to a point where you don't want to lose more and you could see that the 18.6 would make you continue to lose weight. So if that's the case, you know, you might want to just say, well, I'll only do that a few days a week. But if you hate the 18.6, like you're just like, I don't want to do intermittent fasting anymore, then what I would say is just continue to pay attention, eat your meals, you know, try, try to focus. I think mainly is where most of us get in trouble is with emotional eating, um, you know, eating out of boredom or stress or, you know, just being tired, that kind of thing. So uh, focus on that, focus on eating when you're actually hungry and stop when you're actually full. I think those kinds of things, and then just continue to weigh and hold yourself accountable. I think that's, uh, that's how you prevent weight gain. So, uh, Kayla Shepard asked, uh, I've been doing OMAD for a few months now, haven't lost any weight. Do you think calorie counting for our one meal would benefit those of us whose weight loss has stalled or is non-existent? Okay. So here's the thing about questions like this. And Kayla, I don't know if you're in here right now. Um, but sometimes people will say things like, I haven't lost any weight. And my first question is always, have you been weighing every day? Have you been keeping track of your seven day average? And have you been exceedingly consistent with your plan? A lot of times what happens is people are not being consistent because really with OMAD, if you've got, if you've got weight to lose, it's really hard to stall out for months at a time doing OMAD, strict OMAD, uh, and what I mean by OMAD is literally you sit down at your meal, like say supper, you sit down, you haven't had anything to eat all day and you sit there and you eat. And when you're finished eating, you stand up from the table and you start fasting again. That's what I consider an actual one meal a day. It's not like, oh, I eat for an hour or two hours or three hours or four hours. No, it's just like one sitting. That's how I define it. So um, I think if, if you're, if you more have a window and you're not losing, uh, m my theory would probably be that you maybe are overeating during that window. Um, or another thing that might be happening is maybe you don't have any weight really to lose, or maybe you have very little weight to lose. Um, you know, like our bodies aren't perfect <laughs> at, at any stage, you know, you're always going to have little imperfections and stuff like that. Um, you're going to have body fat, you know, some body fat, some body fats, you know, good for you actually. Um, but, uh, so, you know, a good place to start would be like your BMI. That's just like a good rule of thumb. You put in your weight and your height and, uh, it'll tell you, you know, like, are you at a normal weight? Are you overweight? Are you obese? Now, if you're like in the obese category and the scale is not moving and you're only eating one meal a day and you're being really consistent with that over say 12 weeks of time, then I would say I would, you know, maybe talk to a doctor or something because that would sound to me like something's up because it, I mean, you know, your body works pretty much calories in calories out. You know, I mean, people argue with that, but basically OMAD makes it so it's really hard to overeat. Um, uh, 
I, I mean, the, and so calorie counting is fine. I don't enjoy it. I feel like it's really hard to do it accurately. It, it, like in order to really do calorie counting right, you have to be so precise with it because if you just eyeball it, man, you're going to like way overestimate. <laughs> I found that out the hard way, but um, uh, so, the, so, so those are a few things without knowing more information. Those are just hopefully some things that will help you. Uh, Sharon Grant said, weird question. I read your book last week. Fantastic resource, quick read and lots of helpful, encouraging info. Well, thank you. Uh, gave it a five star review on Amazon. Well, and thank you. And thank you to everyone out there who has read the book and then also taken the time to review it. That I appreciate it so, so much. Honest reviews on Amazon. I really do appreciate it. Um, so she started I, uh, intermittent fasting on Friday. So congratulations. Uh, my question is, I went back to college last semester, and even though I often skip breakfast, no problem, uh, when I'm at my 8 a.m. class, my stomach growls so badly, I sometimes have to leave and get a granola bar from the vending machines. It never happens at home. Uh, any tips on how to avoid that without breaking my fast? Okay, so that's like a tough one because it sounds like, you know, uh, maybe maybe you're kind of also nervous too, right? Um, you went back to college, so that's... Uh, you know, probably a little bit nerve wracking. Um, so what I would say is if you're finding that you are like, you've got a growling stomach, um, I would say, well, one, make sure you're eating enough at your meal the night before. Cause it sounds to me like you're probably, uh, like, so what I would do is I would, I would eat right before your window is closing. I always like to do that. Like I would have supper and I would eat just a little something right as my window was closing because I wanted fasting the next day to be super easy. So I would say uh, make sure you're eating plenty during your eating window. And then uh, now as far as the stomach growling, it might help you. I mean, I don't know if you drink coffee, but I've, I've always, uh, I've always had coffee. So coffee with half and half um, that I've, I've, I've never really noticed my stomach grumble it like you know rumbling or anything because I, I I think that gives me just enough uh to keep that from happening um so those are a couple of things you could try uh you could also you know just say well you know when that happens I am going to get a granola bar because I don't want to be embarrassed <laughs> and then you know will that one granola bar if that's all you do like if that's the only thing you'll you put in your window and it's just occasionally like that's probably not going to throw you far off track or anything. The thing that starts to happen sometimes is like, well, you had the granola bar and then it just kind of leads to all day eating, or at least that's what can happen. So, um, but I think, you know, coffee with, with some half and half and it might help you if you like coffee with half and half, uh, you could try a little something else. But I mean, again, really, it's more about, to me, it's more about the way intermittent fasting puts a time boundary on, around food so that you don't eat too many calories, basically. I think that's how it works. But, um, okay, Mimi Masungo5 asked, hey, Kayla, do you think doing a long fast, like a five-day fast, uh, will aid a uh, faster weight loss? Uh, I'm quite new to this one meal a day. Uh, have uh, seen all your videos. Blessings for you, to you for your help. Oh, well, thank you. Um, and, uh, and question two, does it make a difference eating at uh, 22.45, like 15 minutes earlier than the OMAD hour. So, okay. So the first question, uh, do I think of like a five day fast will help you lose weight faster? I don't think so. And, and here is why. Um, so when I did my five day fast, I think I, I should look up this number cause I'm always having to, to talk about it, but I think I lost like between 10 and 11 pounds. Okay. In five days. Now that weight came back pretty rapidly, which was, it was during uh, like the Christmas season. So of course there were baked goods. And, and so perhaps that did um, kind of spur the, the, the regain, but um, you know, may, maybe a half a pound a day from that uh, is what you can expect as far as permanent weight loss. Like if you, if you've actually got weight to lose, I think that was a, a figure I'd heard said. So let's let's take that five day fast, right? And, and let's say you lose 2.5 pounds permanently. The rest is probably going to be water weight that you lose and then regain. First of all, that loss and regain psychologically would be a major thing to overcome 
if you're just trying if you're just trying to lose weight because seeing the scale go that far down and then come come up that fast can be scary i mean you know like i and that's why i waited until i was down to the weight i wanted to maintain out before i did my five day fast because i knew that about myself that like if i was just trying to lose weight right and i just did that five day fast it would be like i would be addicted to that like fast drop and i've seen a lot of people that that seems to kind of happen to them so um i think it's better to 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 look at longer fast you know like it, you know and always do that with your doctor's approval and all that i'm not a doctor but um uh, i would I would save those for those um, non weight loss benefits. Like, uh, you know, I, I was mostly interested in it for the cancer prevention uh, that I had heard about. Um, some people do it for religious purposes. And, um, and I think those are good reasons, but as far as just straight up weight loss, I think it's just like psychologically really hard because here's the thing that makes like when you drop 10 pounds in a week, that makes one pound in a week seem like, oh, that's nothing. And one pound a week consistently over time is fantastic. So that's why I don't recommend it. It just, you know, that's my own personal opinion. Um, now, as far as does it make a difference if you eat 15 minutes earlier? Now you're saying like a whole hour, right, is what you, you consider OMAD, which is not how I, I would, you know, you know, define it or whatever. But personally, I don't think it, I mean, like, it's not that big a deal. Like if you, I, I never was that strict with myself as far as like, uh, you know, if, if, if the schedule just so happened that, you know, my, my fasting with, or sorry, my eating window was supposed to open up at six, but our schedule dictated that it's like five forty-five, and supper needs to be on the table. Supper is going to be on the table at five forty-five, and I'm not going to think another thing about it. Um, it's just not that big of a deal, really, like that, that 15 minutes or, or whatever. Um, and that's really why I like OMAD so much, because you don't even have to think about a window. It's just like, just eat supper. <laughs> just like, that's all you have to think about. Just eat supper. Um, but yeah, I don't think it matters. Um, I think it's much worse to like worry about all those stuff, like all those things. Like, just don't worry. Just be relaxed. Do it the best you can. And don't freak out about those little things. Um, D Castle said in one of your videos, you stated that you wanted to lose a few more pounds to hold yourself accountable before going to do YouTube videos. What exactly did you do to drop the few extra pounds? Thank you for all you're doing for helping us. Well, you're welcome, D. Um, I think I was trying to think about like what, what might have I been referring to? I think what you heard me talk about was when I started this channel, uh, when I made my first video, I was still technically in the overweight BMI range, uh, like by, I think like three, three or four pounds. I think when I got down to 154, that's when I would have been in the normal range. So, uh, so I, like I was, I was at 157, I was maintaining between 157 and 162 basically. So, um, uh, so when I started the channel though, I just felt like, I need to lose that, that like last little bit of weight so that I'm firmly in the normal BMI. I, I you know, it's kind of a silly thing. I think looking back, it's like, I think everybody should, you know, tell their story. You should not let that hold you back. Like um, if you're technically overweight or whatever, but you have a story to tell or you've found something that works for you, I do think you should tell that story. I think it was silly of me to kind of hold myself back in that way or to, or to think, oh, people, people don't even know. People didn't even know. I mean, I only, they only probably knew because I like made my way public. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the point is I felt that just in my own, it was just like a nagging little thing too, just for me. Even if I hadn't started the YouTube channel, I think I still probably would have said, you know, I don't like this technicality that I'm technically overweight, even though I felt fantastic. Um, so that's why I did it. Um, and so the way I lost the weight was um, to go back to eating uh, OMAD, one meal a day, six days a week, cheat day on Sunday, and uh, walking six miles a day. That's all I did. I did not count calories. I did not limit carbs. I didn't go low carb, nothing like that. And that's all I did. Okay, let's see. Nessus, uh, Mondragon said when you start uh sorry when you started omad did you gain any weight 
and no, I didn't gain any weight. Um, I did, um, that first week, I think I dropped like six pounds and then I plateaued for about five or six weeks. <laughs> so it was, uh, it was a funny thing that just happened. And, and that, that does tend to happen. You know, if you have a big drop, a lot of times it's like, then it just plateaus for a while and then you maybe we'll have another big drop. Um, one thing though, certainly, and I've been tracking my weight for four years now. So uh, weight fluctuates by a lot. And so uh, I would suggest if you're doing OMAD, start weighing yourself every day, write down that number uh, or put it in an app. Like you can get uh, the Happy Scale app or you can get um, Libra Scale app or you can use my weight tracking spreadsheet and uh, you can just start tracking your daily weight. And then you can start calculating and, or these apps or the spreadsheet will do it for you, your seven day average. And so that's basically just the past seven days of weight, the single day weight, they add them all up and divide by seven. Okay. So then because you av you are averaging your weight, you get a better picture of like, where is your weight actually at? Because weight fluctuates. And if you're looking at just the fluctuations, it's very hard to get a handle on it. But when you start to average it, you'll start to see whether the number is going up or if it's, you know, going down, uh, trending down rather. So uh, that would be my suggestion is if you're, if you're afraid that it's a gain, really just like, I'd say give it six to eight weeks of being really consistent with OMAD and see what your weight does. And sometimes, you know, sometimes, sometimes people kind of stall out in the very beginning, which is super frustrating. Like you feel like, man, I'm doing everything right. But there have been some people that ha who have told me like, man, I, you know, for the first, like, I think one woman said, basically for the first six weeks, the scale did not move, but she stuck with it and she just kept going. And then the scale started to move down predictably. So, you know, everybody's body is different. Um, so just be really patient with it. Um, Let's see, uh, if, if that, Afzal, hopefully I pronounced your name right, uh, one can eat whatever they want doing OMAD and still lose weight, question mark. Uh, is it possible and how long will it take to lose 50 pounds? That is my goal. I've started doing OMAD a month ago. Okay, well, you've, <clears throat> Kayla, you've really motivated me by your results. Okay, well, thanks. I'm glad that I've motivated you. Um, oops, sorry, I hit the microphone. Um, okay, so yes, I eat whatever I want. Um, I eat spaghetti and meatballs. I eat tacos and rice and beans and um, occasionally dessert. I don't eat dessert that often just because we just don't have it very often. We did have, uh, my, my son made us some uh, chocolate oatmeal drop cookies, you know, those little things you boil for uh, after dinner tonight. But, um, uh, but I've never put any restrictions on myself as far as you can't eat this. I always said, you can eat whatever you want. And that actually worked out much better for me, you know, because in the past I'd always done, I'd always said, you can't have, you know, this, that, or that, you can't have dessert when you're trying to lose weight. You can't have, you know, uh, bread <laughs> that was, or, or, you know, whatever the thing was. Um, but this time I just said, I want to learn how to lose weight while I'm eating everything. Uh, because I really felt like that was the most sustainable thing because these foods will come back in my life. I mean, I'm a Southerner, so there will be, you know, gravy and biscuits in my life uh, at some point. So I wanted to learn how to eat like that, you know, eat all the things. And, and I mean, I eat vegetables and salad. I had salad tonight. Um, but uh, the point is I wanted to learn how to eat all the things. I've lost 80 pounds. I'm sure that you can lo uh, lose 50 pounds. Um, I would say, uh, just be patient. You said, how long will it take? What I found was when I had the most weight to lose, uh, I lost it at about a pound a week. Okay. Um, that was when I was still in the overweight BMI. I went from obese BMI to overweight BMI. And then though, once I started really approaching the normal weight, uh, BMI, that's when the weight loss slowed. So about a pound a week when I was overweight and when I was obese, when I was in the normal zone or near the normal zone, it was one third of one pound a week, which is about a pound a month, which is really slow. And you have to be really patient with. Um, so I would say, you know, if you've got a lot to lose, you didn't mention like where you are currently, but I would say, you know, a pound a week is, um, you know, great a half a pound a week is, is great. You know, really whatever you're able to stick with 
and be consistent with, that's great. Like, even if it's slower than that, just be really patient with it. Even if it takes a year or two years, you know, uh, you know, a pound a week uh, for a year, that that's 50 pounds right there. You can and you can do that. Um, people do it. And and uh, that's pretty much what I did. Let's see. Yeah. I was, I was trying to think about my timeline. That would have been about right. Yeah. Yeah. I think. Is that right? I think so. <laughs> I'm, I'm having trouble, but I think it was right, right at 50 pounds. So, um, okay. Uh, so from the Instagram uh, tab, uh, and if you want to follow me on Instagram, my handle is Kayla M. Cox, M as in Marie, like my middle name. Uh, and you can follow me on there. I, It's not all about fasting. It's sometimes about my family, sometimes about RV life, <laughs> just you know, random things. So, um, plant powered 121 said, uh, hi, Kayla, I just finished uh, your book and enjoyed it very much. I listened to the audible version on my walks. Oh, well, cool. Um, my question is which one of the two fasting or walking do you think really helped to take the weight off? Do you think you had such great success because you walked or were you losing weight while just fasting. I recently found that adding daily walking has helped me drop the weight so much better than fasting alone. Do you feel the walking every day is why you're able to keep the weight up? So those are really good questions. Really, really good. Um, so here, here's what I'll say. And my gut feeling is it was the fasting, but I feel like the walking was very, very important. So I've interviewed a lot of people um, who have lost a lot of weight with zero exercise because they were at a point where literally they, they could not, they could not get out there and exercise. They just couldn't do it. So all they could do was just sit there and fast, you know, and, um, and they lost weight. Now I never tried that. I never tried only, you know, only intermittent fasting and no, you know, no physical uh, activity. Um, and so I can't tell you for sure. I can't say like, well, obviously it was the fasting because I wasn't ever, you know, I, I, I lost it, you know, during this period of time, I never tried it, but here's what walking did. And I think it's much more important than the, than the calorie burn because there is, I mean, I am burning calories, obviously six miles of walking. It's like two hours of, you know, pretty leisurely activity, but still activity. Um, but I am burning calories, but I do think that that probably increases my appetite. And I think different people kind of react to um, physical activity in different ways. I think some people get hungrier, some people don't. But um, I think that by walking every day for those two hours, it did a couple of things. First of all, it kept me really on track with the fasting because a lot of times when I felt the most tempted to eat was when I was kind of just bored. And then I would remind myself like, Hey, you, you got steps to get in. <laughs> so like, instead of going and fixing yourself a snack, why don't you go get your steps in? And, and, and that helped me build, like build the discipline to, to stick with fasting. Um, it gave me something to do, uh, constructive <laughs> with my time besides eat. Um, and it kept me, because I was out there walking for two hours at a time, it, you know, my mind, I was able to think about things, really get clarity on things, take some time for myself. Um, because I wasn't really taking good care of myself when, when I had gotten to, um, to my highest weight, I really wasn't taking good care of myself. So I think that, so it was very important, but I don't know, uh, if, you know, had everything else stayed the same. So if my consistency had been as spectacular without the walking as it was with the walking, would I have lost the same amount of weight? I don't know. I don't know if it would have been slower weight loss or, or if it would have tapered off completely. I really don't know. Um, but I would say, I will always, I say, you know, if people can move, you know, if they can get out there and do something, I think that's better than not you know, because of the mood boost that you get. I really do. I think it's important I, and because when you're feeling good, it's a lot easier to stick with the eating plan. But if you're sitting there feeling bad, it's a lot easier to just, you know, say, eh, I'm not going to stick with the fasting today. Um, that's just, that's been my experience. So, and I, and I'll say that specifically because when I was in the first time I was in maintenance mode, 
back in 2017, I noticed that about myself. I was getting grouchy again <laughs> uh, because I, I was like, well, I guess I don't have to walk six miles a day anymore. Uh, so I would, I would have days where I wouldn't walk the six miles. And I started noticing a pattern there. My, my mood wasn't as good. I was kind of grouchy. Then I was like, eh, I don't really, you know, like I would want to eat more during the day for no good reason, you know? So, um, so yeah, so that's, that's my answer. Uh, Christina uh, Bucheri, I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. You, you've, you've asked so many different questions and I, I hope I'm pronouncing it right. I hope I'm not butchering it every single time. Um, maybe you could leave me a pronunciation guide <laughs> the next time. Okay, so she said, I actually have a question about morning pages, if that's okay. And that is more than okay. Uh, I just started doing them and I wondered what size of notebook do you use? Just curious. Mine is a standard spiral bound notebook and it takes a good bit of time to fill up three pages. Also, have you found time uh, found over time that you write that you have less to write about, or do your whirling thoughts still flow quickly? Well, so glad you brought this up, Christina. I think I'm on my ninth spiral bound notebook, and it is—it's just a eight and a half by eleven. Yeah. Page. Well, this is this isn't my morning page. I actually meant to grab my morning pages, but it looks similar to this spiral bound notebook. Sometimes I'll grab the uh, college ruled. Sometimes it'll be wi wide ruled. Uh, it's really just whatever happens to be there at Walmart. But um, so uh, now you said, you know, uh, that so that, that's the answer. To the first question. The second question is, do I have less to write about now? So funny that you asked this because uh, this morning, actually, I was thinking, I really now I notice a, a huge difference in in my thoughts as far as like what the first several times I did well really I would say the first several months of morning pages and and morning pages for those of you who don't know um, it's three pages of long hand so just you sit there and write for three pages stream of consciousness just everything that's going through your mind you just write it down you write it all down and that comes from the artist's way. By Julia Cameron, which is an excellent book. If you are a creative person, or if you even think I'm not a creative person, then you should read that book. <laughs> so uh, it's a really, really good book. But um, I, the reason I even read that book was because so many different people had recommended it. I was listening to different podcasts. It was one of those that just kept getting recommended and mentioned by so many various people. So I said, I'm going to try that out. So um so in the beginning, when I would do these, uh, first of all, three pages, man, that seemed like, oh, this is <laughs> so intimidating. Like I can't fill up three pages, um, but I could. And um, in the beginning, I remember I, I felt like my, my thoughts were racing through my mind like a freight train. Like that, that was the best way I knew how to describe it. Like my, my brain was just like this, just constantly. And now when I go to pick up the pen, my brain is just a lot more calm and, um, and my thinking I think is more organized. Um, I still have days, <laughs> still have plenty of days where it's like my mind is racing, you know, things I'm worried about or things, uh, you know, whatever, uh, things are going on. Um, but even on those days where I think, I don't know what to write. I still end up like, I'll get on some sort of uh, train of thought. I mean, stuff that happened back in like middle school, that was something I was writing about today. I was like, wow, that, it's crazy um, how even when you think there's nothing left to explore, I actually kind of had that thought, well, I guess I've kind of explored everything. Then like this whole thing opened up. I was like, well, I guess I got a lot more to explore. So um, uh, yeah, I even though my thoughts are calmer, I still have plenty left to write about, if that makes sense. He says it's Buseri. Buseri. Buseri? Buseri. Buseri. I will try to get that right in the future, Christina. Okay. Thank you for telling me the pronunciation. Um, okay. Studio 33 asked, uh, does the cheat day have to be the same day every week? Uh, can it be Sunday one week and Wednesday the next? I say it can be whatever day you want it to be. I always kept it on the same day, and here's why. Um, because my life, or, well, no, not my life. My sense of time is really bad. Like, 
I forget what day it is half the time. A lot of times I kind of forget what season we're in, what month we're in. I'm just not good at that kind of thing. And I always like to try to play to my strengths. So having that one consistent day, because I wouldn't be able to remember from one week to the next. I'd be like, wait, did I already have my cheat day this week? You know, and instead it's like every week it is Sunday. I know that there's no changing it. And so that's why I did it. But if you're a more organized person <laughs> that can keep track of that, I say that's fine. You know, especially if you find that your life just works better by moving your cheat day around occasionally. I say, go for it. And the main thing above all is focus on your results. Just keep tracking your weight. Do it the way you think would be preferable to you and then see what your results are. Um, but yeah, I, I think that's fine. Um, Peter Bingston uh, says, hi, Kayla. When you answered this question, it's 2 a.m. in Sweden. Well, if you're in here, Peter, thanks for joining us at this early hour. <laughs> um, I really crave sweets the hours after my OMAD meal. Do you have some advice on how to handle this? Uh, sometimes I eat candy, cookies, and, uh, and or ice cream after uh, my meal, like hours after my meal. Okay, so that, what I would say, you didn't mention it, but I wonder if you're, if you're allowing yourself the sweets at the meal. So is it that you think, well, I don't want to eat sweets and then so you don't eat it at your OMAD and then later on you're, you're really craving it and you end up eating them. Um, because I will just eat them whenever I crave them, but at my meal. So I'm really intentional with that. It's like whatever I've been craving uh, when I'm doing OMAD, like if my rule for that day is OMAD, because right now I'm in maintenance. So again, you know, it gets, gets a little bit, you know, more loosey goosey when you're in maintenance. But uh, if you're just doing solely OMAD, then I would suggest, you know, reminding yourself at your OMAD, like, okay, I need, I need to have a little something sweet. And I mean, I, I have no problem with that. I've always allowed myself to do that. And, um, uh, and the other end of that is maybe you are saying, well, I, I don't want it at my, my OMAD, but I'm only craving it, you know, at this other time. Um, so that's, that would be kind of an interesting thing. I've not ever experienced that. I've always found it's really a lot easier because I'll say, well, if I'm craving that right now, then I'll just have that at my meal. Right. So, um, uh, if you're finding, or it might be that you're actually eating sweets at your meal and then you're having cravings for more sweets later, which again, I would, I would think maybe you're not eating enough at your meal. Um, you might also experiment with having more of a window as opposed to just the one meal and kind of see how that works. Um, uh, because like having those kind of like cravings. Now, another thing also if you're really crave, like if the cravings come for what seems like no reason, perhaps you're stressed, you know, you could kind of explore that journal that out, figure out, you know, is there a reason or is there a reason why you're craving the sweets, but it's not really the sweets. It's, you know, like maybe you're tired or maybe, you know, something stressful is going on in your life and explore that a little bit. Okay. Let's see. Uh, Sharon Grant, uh, uh, I read your book, Laid Back Guide to Intermittent Fasting, last week, and you had me when you said you have coffee with half and half during your fasting window. Uh, I knew I'd be able to live that. Awesome. Uh, finishing your first week today. Well, Sharon, I hope it's going great for you. Yeah, having my coffee with half and half, I'm telling you, that I feel like that was the key to get me through. It was just like, if I can have my coffee, I can do this fasting thing. <laughs> so that's, I'm so glad. Uh, and thanks for reading my book. Uh, glad you enjoyed it. Um, Jesse L. said, how long does it typically take for your body to adjust to OMAD and for the hunger to ease up? Okay, so Jesse, I, I went to OMAD really, really gradually. So I practiced intermittent fasting um, not, not very consistently during 2015. I kept, you know, quitting and, and I would do other things. But in 2015, I was really learning how to do intermittent fasting, I feel like. And uh, so during that time, I went from, I started out with like an eight hour fast, worked my way up to probably about a 16 hour fast by January. When I, when I sat down and I said, okay, I'm doing intermittent fasting six days a week, cheat day on Sunday, walking six miles a day. That's, that's my plan. 
uh, at that point I was like at a, probably like a 16, eight, 18, six. And then, uh, I, from, so from January till April, I was, my fasting window was getting a little bit longer, a little bit longer. And then I was at about a 24 stomach bug, went through our house and, uh, I ended up eating just one meal a day. I didn't get sick, but I was like too nervous to eat, you know? So, uh, so I kind of jumped from a 24, sorry, 24 to OMAD. That was the biggest jump I, I had made really. That was like four hours almost, uh, that I made the jump. Usually my, usually when I pushed out my window, it's only like by 15 minutes, 30 minutes, may, maybe an hour. If I was like, man, I really got this one down pat, I'll push it out further. Um, so, uh, and even that, even that was an adjustment and it took some time. Uh, my biggest struggle was to figure out how, how can I eat just like just enough so that I'm eating plenty and I'm feeling full until supper the next day, but I'm not, uh, like overeating to the point of feeling miserable, you know, like I wanted to hit that sweet spot. Um, and that took try a lot of trial and error. And I mean, and it took trial and error over time, plus with all the different meals, <laughs> because different meals kind of digest differently. You know, some stuff, it's like the next day, it's like, man, I, I didn't eat the right stuff yesterday because it's like, it's, it just burned off too quickly. Um, uh, so it took me some time. Um, most people find, you know, two to three weeks of consistency. Uh, usually it like the hunger side of it, it, it is like they've adjusted to it. Some people take a little bit longer. Some people go straight to OMAD. Uh, like they'll be eating five, six meals a day and say, I'm just going to do OMAD. And they never look back and they're fine with it. I think it's a very individual thing. So if you're finding that it's really difficult, I would say lengthen your eating window out to what you can feel comfortable with at first. Just look at it as like a practice period. Instead of trying to like put all this pressure on yourself to like lose a bunch of weight and do it perfectly, just be like, okay, I got to learn how to fast. And then, you know, go with the window that you can stick with consistently at first. And then, you know, if necessary, make your eating window a little shorter and a little shorter until you hit that sweet spot for yourself, you know, and maybe it's OMAD for you, but, um, just don't, don't just say, well, I've got to do OMAD and nothing else work. A lot of people have perfectly great results, uh, with a 16, 8, 18, 6. Some people go from doing OMAD and switch over to an 18, 6 or 16, 8, cause they prefer it or they feel better or the results are better. So, you know, just experiment with it and, and don't get in a hurry. Uh, Kate Chaco says, uh, what about weight loss if you don't work out? I think we kind of covered that, but again, a lot of people do lose weight uh, without working out. It, again, it to me, it's calories in, calories out at bottom. I mean, I think it's a it, intermittent fasting, specifically OMAD, is so easy as far as like calories in, calories. It just it restricts your calories in a really easy to do way. Um, but you know, uh, if you're, bur you know, if you're sitting there and you're not burning more than your, uh, if you're burning, let's say, I want to make sure I say this, right. <laughs> if you are not burning more than you're consuming, then you're probably either going to maintain or you're going to gain, like depending on whether it's just a pretty steady state. Uh, where you're not, you know, balanced, you know, you're, you're consuming about what you're burning, or if you're not consuming what you're burning, you know, then you're going to put it on as weight. So, um, Martha, Martina Green asked, how do you deal with water retention? I just do it. I mean, I just, I just sit there and grin and bear it. And I just say, wow, you know, I mean, there, there are times, uh, especially with, uh, allergy season, uh, the aller my allergies this season, as you can see, because I'm wearing these glasses, um, have been horrible this year. I mean, just really, really bad. Lots and lots of pollen. And, um, you know, it's so that definitely makes my, my weight fluctuate uh, upwards, retain water, you know, all that good stuff. And then uh, if you add in taking uh, antihistamines, that messes with your water weight too. So 
uh, I just grin and bear it. I, I actually weighing myself every day for the past four years <laughs> has helped me to shrug off uh, water retention and just to realize like, man, the scale can fluctuate in incredible ways. And I just kind of have to write it out. And, and it's fun. It, it can actually be fun to, to say, uh, I can't wait to see how quickly this comes back off. <laughs> and, you know, especially with things like um, uh, Mexican food, Chinese food, because man, that'll make my water weight go way up. And then it'll be back down within a day or eh, probably two, two days usually. Again, you know, putting it, putting it out, like writing down your weight or, or logging it um, daily and, and tracking it over a long period of time really helps with the psychological end of it, I'd say. Shelly asked, uh, I've been on OMAD for two weeks. I do fine until it's time to eat. I eat, then I feel sick and I don't overeat. Any ideas on why? Huh, that's an interesting thing. I've never done that, felt sick, but not, not from overeating. I, now I've, I have in the past overeaten one one time in particular with sushi man i was just we were sitting there watching a movie and i was just pounded <laughs> pounding the sushi i guess and i i felt sick um but you know if if you so you've been doing omad for two weeks and and so you're still in an adjustment phase but i would say lengthen your window out you know just um go go to you know maybe do like maybe you could try doing lunch and dinner only. Just say, I'm only going to eat lunch and then I'm only going to eat dinner. Uh, that way you're eating two times a day and see if that works because not everybody does great with OMAD. My husband is not not good <laughs> with intermittent fasting. He's just not. He has tried valiantly to, to, to do OMAD and he does not do well with it. He doesn't even really do well <laughs> I would say <laughs> with any no, uh, with any of it, uh, he just doesn't do well. Um, so I would just say, you know, experiment with it. it. You do not have to just do OMAD. That's like the only thing that will make you lose weight. Um, you could try try two two meals a day. See how that works. Um, because I think the most important thing is that you're feeling really good all the time. That's the most important thing. Because if you're feeling sick, you're not going to want to stick with this. So keep experimenting with it and, and, you know, kind of notice how you're feeling. Um, I've never experienced that. So hopefully that helps you. Uh, Arlene Swanson asked, what's the best time for uh, to fast for uh, perimenopause at 40 years old? Well, I'm not a doctor, but, um, and and so first of all, if, if you if you have any kind of medical concerns, like with, you know, if you get, maybe you're on uh, medications and things like that, always talk with your doctor. Um, but, I, you know, it depends on what your goals are too. With with fasting in general, what what are your goals? Are you trying to lose weight? Uh, I always recommend you know start out with a very very short fasting window, work your way out to a little bit longer, and notice your results and and be happy with you know a pound a week is fantastic. If you don't have much left to lose, then like a half a pound, a third of a pound a week is really probably more. Uh, uh, realistic. So, um, just take it easy. Uh, especially like if you're having other symptoms too, where you're, you know, uh, you know, hormonal changes are happening. So just take it easy and just be really patient. Dave Sim says, my uh, cousin was telling me a great way to start keto is by having nothing but bacon and eggs for the first three weeks, uh, to get your body off sugar and carbs. What are your thoughts on this to go along with intermittent fasting? A lot of people do keto, with intermittent fasting, some people just do straight keto. Um, I think whatever works for you, whatever you think you can stick with for the rest of your life <laughs> is, is a good idea. Anything that you don't foresee doing for the rest of your life, or at least a, a kind of a form of it, because maintenance, you know, is for the rest of your life. And so, um, and, and more than likely, your maintenance plan is probably going to be something similar to what you did to lose the weight, you know, uh, that have, what happens to some people is like they do this drastic thing and then they're trying to maintain the weight loss and it's really difficult. Um, but I've found, you know, with intermittent fasting, you can kind of, you can continue to price it, but it's going to, you know, you can be a bit looser with it. But it's th at the same time, if you had success with it, losing the weight, it's probably going to be a, a really good way to maintain it. Um, so, um, you know, it, if that's what you're going to do, then I would say, you know, 
I don't, I don't really think it's necessary with intermittent fasting to do that, but uh, I would say instead, just go really slow with your fasting with it. Uh, don't get in a hurry. Carrie Cutters uh, said, uh, hey, hey, Carrie, I, I remember you. Um, I've been out here trying to find my willpower and self-control. It's been so hard praying and trying to get back on plan. Well, you will find it and you're praying, so that's good. Um, God helps us when, when we pray. I truly, truly believe that. I had my moment <laughs> in 2014, you know, um, when I when those pictures of me were tagged on Facebook, I just, I had a moment there. I mean, and, and it really was like I was sitting there and I was praying. I, you know, I, I eventually, thankfully, started praying. I think that's what knocked some sense into me because before that, previous to that, I was sitting there being so mad at everybody else. I was blaming everybody else for my weight. And, and then I started praying and then <laughs> it was like, I started to realize like, I am the one to blame. I, I, I chose this, not, not anybody else. Nobody else chose this. I chose this. So um, I, I think you'll find it. You just got, you just do not quit. Just keep trying and keep, you know, working at it and just say, okay, if this thing doesn't work, I'm going to find, I'm, I am going to find that thing. You will get there, Carrie. You really will. Uh, Lorena or Lorena, sorry, uh, Baloo said, I finally started OMAD yesterday and I'm loving all this time I have to get work done and do creative things. I was curious about what do you fill your free time with? Well, um, uh, yeah, there is so much free time. One thing I fill it with, you know, is uh, the walking. I get a lot of work done. I mean, I, I do create videos and uh, I create courses now. Uh, I haven't started writing another book yet, but I think I will. Um, and I play with my kids at homeschool. My three kids were full-time RVers. Uh, you know, uh, I love to read. I love, love to read. I love to draw. I haven't been drawing lately, but that can't, it's like drawing is one of those things. If I'm going to sit down and do it, I need to like, I want to devote like two or three hours at a time. And lately my time has been taken up with other things, but, um, yeah, drawing and reading. I could sit and read all day. <laughs> I mean, like really, I, I love to read, love, love, love to read. Uh, yeah, I think that's, I hang out with Jay <laughs> when we watch, uh, we don't watch much TV except for at night. Uh, like uh, when, after the kids are in, uh, in bed, we'll like at probably like nine, we'll fall asleep to, you know, watching Psych or Fringe or something. So yeah. Uh, Okay. LP says, I'm having a difficult time with snacking while I'm making dinner. I'm so hungry. So I snack while I cook. Do you have any ideas uh, to not snack while cooking your OMAD? Um, well, you know, I was never real strict with myself on that. Like, like I need to taste stuff, you know, like now I don't know, you might be talking about earlier in the day, but if like, if I was standing there just cooking, we're about to eat, you know, like I'm going to take a bite <laughs> to make sure I'm, I've got my flavorings right and everything. So, um, uh, but you did say, you know, but you, but also don't beat yourself up about it. And I would say, you know, I, I kind of find it almost fun to say like a challenge, right. To say, you know, I, I don't have to take that bite right now. Um, and so you can do it either way. You could say, I'm just going to try to get into the habit of not snacking, which just takes practice and being intentional with it and being determined to not do it, to simply not take that bite. Because you're in 100% control of that, right? Like you get to pick it up and put it in your mouth or not. Um, but just decide, just say, I'm either, I'm going to allow myself to do this because, hey, I need to adjust seasonings or I'm just not going to do it you know, and, and just practice it. it. It takes practice though. And you won't be perfect at it at first, but you have to just say, I'm going to get a little bit better at that. Um, Jesse Chung said, uh, hi, Kayla, have you ever experienced hair loss during uh, intermittent fasting or OMAD? Because I experienced hair loss after practicing 16 and, and keto for two months. I want to try OMAD, but worry about having hair loss again. Okay. So my hair is thinner than it was before I had kids. But when I had kids, my hair did get thinner. I, I definitely know that. Uh, plus, I'm 34. 34. Um, so my, my understanding is that, that you know, kind of happens when we have those hormonal changes. Now, also, uh, I, I read something the other day that said 
you know, uh, hair loss, just like when you're losing weight, hair loss can happen. So it's kind of one of those things, right? Like, well, what are you supposed to do? I don't have a great answer. I mean, my hair is what it is. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I, I, I haven't noticed it getting any thinner than it was after my third child. So like after I had my third child, that's when I was at my heaviest and my hair is much like it is right now. So, um, so I don't know. I would say, you know, you could also, I mean, you could try it and say, well, if I start to experience it, then I'll stop. Um, you can also ask your doctor too, if, if there's anything going on. Um, uh, so hopefully that helps you. Uh, Francis Wright, do you exercise? I walk six miles a day. I've also started doing push-ups in the morning and sometimes just throughout the day, like when I take a notion to do them. Uh, my goal is really to, to just get to the point where I can do, I don't know, 15, 20, like regular push-ups, man push-ups. I did the first couple yesterday, like of my actual push-ups. Uh, so yeah, I, I started out doing girl push-ups and then went to doing just really horrible, horrible form, <laughs> like boy push-ups. Um, William Jones, how do I fast without the temptation to eat? Start slowly, push your window out really slowly, work on, uh, other things like emotional eating, uh, like working out things that are stressing you out. Um, uh, and just, it's a skill. Fasting is a skill and it takes practice and it takes time. Uh, Sandy Ocean, I just found your channel on a morning light. Great. I appreciate your easy approach. Question, do you make breakfast and lunch for your family? I just started today by skipping breakfast. Awesome. That's a great first strategy is just skip breakfast. Um, and some people find that's all that's necessary. Uh, do I make breakfast for my, uh, and lunch for my family? Sometimes, and sometimes I don't. I really try to encourage my kids to be self-sufficient. Um, it's a little bit trickier in the RV with, uh, you know, limited space and just things that are out of reach and stuff. But um, in the beginning, a lot of times um, I would just have them handle it. Like I'd have my, my younger kids uh, make their own food or my, sorry, my older kids make their own food. Uh, it seems like Jay would usually kind of do breakfast uh, for our youngest. I don't really remember it being an issue though, really ever. Like I just, because I went so slowly with it, it wasn't like a temptation. Now there are certain things that smell really good to me, even now, like bacon and eggs. You know, we have turkey bacon and eggs, uh, or he does sometimes in the morning and man, that smells good. So, um, but, but it was just like a, I can have that later. So I, I don't have to, to eat that right now. So it just helped me to not, to, to be able to not eat. Um, uh, per, uh, Perry McComb said, I just started my fasting uh, two weeks now, no eating after 8 PM and I'm uh, feeling better. That is uh, feeling better than you felt in years. That's awesome. Perry. Thanks for sharing that. Um, uh, Judith asked, uh, hi, Kayla, listen to your book on Audible. Oh, awesome. Thank you. Uh, Anna left it. I'm not sure if I missed it in the book, but was wondering how long your fasting window is on a typical day nowadays. And, and for the bulk of my weight loss, it was, I was eating one meal a day. So that's almost a 24 hour fasting window. I mean, basically I'm eating at say six 30 every day. And so I'd eat from, you know, like my meal maybe took 30 minutes to eat maybe. Um, so from six 30 to seven, let's say I was eating, I never timed it. Um, and then I, I would eat at 6.30 the next day. Uh, so uh, let's see. It seems like you have it. Oh, was there a part two to that? I think that was all. Yeah. Um, uh, Daniel Holm, uh, so, uh, so about 24 hours. Nowadays, uh, like I said, I do OMAD most days, but some days I'll, I'll have lunch or, you know, uh, or I'll have supper and then snacks. You know, it just really, right now I'm just in maintenance mode. So that's a bit more laid back. Uh, Daniel I, Holmes says, I'm finding that I can't resist the urge to midnight snack at the stroke of midnight on my cheat day. Is it okay to do that? Do this. <laughs> That's awesome. So I'm not sure if you're, I think what you're saying is midnight, like, so if you're, if it's like Sunday is your cheat day, you're saying like midnight, stroke of midnight, Sunday is technically Sunday, so you're doing it. I think that's fine. I mean, I, 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 I'm, that sounds really familiar to, to me. Like I'm thinking that 
there were times that I would do that because we have sleep, like my, my family with our kids, we do sleep on the couch night on Saturday night. So generally that looked like we would have, you know, uh, like some sort of takeout or something and watch a movie, but we would stay at, we'll, we'll usually stay up pretty late. And I'm pretty sure that I would, I would use that like, Hey, it's midnight. So it's my cheat day and I would eat some more food. So I think it's fine. Again, focus on your results and, and you're doing fine. Um, <laughs> Jack K, you can't tell that you're a Southerner with that thick Boston accent. That's funny. Uh, Manuel De Leon said, should I be cautious if the weight is dropping faster than what I was originally planning for? Look, if you're ever like if there's ever an alarm bell that goes off in your head, like you think maybe something's wrong. I always say, talk to your doctor about it. Um, like now sometimes though, what happens with weight, sometimes it will drop and then it'll level off, then drop. Some people experience really big drops in the beginning because it's water weight basically. Um, so, but again, if you're feeling good and, and you're just saying like, wow, I'm surprised that I lost a little bit more than what I thought then I, I would say that's fine. But if you're thinking maybe something's wrong, always listen to your gut and go to your doctor and, and get it, you know, get checked out. US Girl 21 says, my eating window starts at different times between 12.30 or 1.30 p.m., but I always end about 7.30 p.m. Is the very time going to start to hinder weight loss? I don't see why it would. I think you're doing fantastically. And uh, you the way you worded your question makes it sound like you're doing fine right now. Like you're not seeing any weight loss uh, or sorry, any, um, any hindering of the weight loss yet. Wait to worry on that. Just say, okay, I'm going to do it this way until it ain't working anymore. And then we'll go from there. But it sounds to me like that you're, you are right on track. You're doing great. And again, be laid back about it. Just say, okay, this is pretty much when I open my window, pretty much when I close my window and just be really consistent with that. And it sounds like you're doing great. NJ, can you do OMAD on weekdays and 16-8 on weekends and have the same effect in regards to weight loss? That's a good question. Um, I think that some people, well, I will say this. Some people report they have even better results by kind of mixing it up like that than they do if they only do straight OMAD. Now, I like to keep it easy on myself. I like to just know Monday through Saturday, generally speaking, OMAD, you know, Sunday's my cheat day. You know, I do whatever I want that day. Uh, I would get confused if it was like, wait, which day is this? And what is my schedule? But uh, plenty of people do it like that and they're fine. And the thing is, uh, the big thing is, are you having results? And just be patient with it. Like, even if that meant, let, let's say hypothetically, maybe that would slow your results just a tad. But that would maybe seem really, really easy and really easy to stick with, then that's a really positive thing. Stick with the thing that seems easy and seems like you could stick with it very consistently. Um, let's see. My uh, Michaela Claire said, when you say cheat day, do you eat three meals a day instead of OMAD? I eat whatever I want on cheat day, however many times during the day I want. Uh, you know, most days I would say it ends up being three meals, but sometimes it's like, We'll have a really late breakfast and then I'll have like afternoon snacks and then we'll have supper. I mean, it just varies. You know how Sundays are, or at least in our house, it's like really laid back. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so it's different every time. I mean, there have been times where it's like, we'll have breakfast and then I won't even like be hungry until supper. Um, but I just, you know, I, it's really, there's really just no rules on, on that day. I always do have breakfast because we have our pancake breakfast. Jay makes wonderful homemade pancakes for us every Sunday or, or some kind of nice thing. So, uh, so yeah, so that's what I do on cheat days. Uh, so we've covered all the questions. Uh, sorry for the, the weird start today with the no volume. I have no idea what happened, uh, or the no sound rather. Um, so, uh, thanks for joining me. Uh, thank you for all the questions. Uh, I'm going to go look at the chat now and uh, see what all I missed, all the little conversations and stuff. Um, and I will see you guys again next week. Uh, remember that I do also what, well, 
let's see, first of all, I do a new YouTube video, a topical something every Monday, usually about intermittent fasting, sometimes about just weight loss in general. Uh, I also do a podcast. Uh, uh, it's called the Six Miles is Ever podcast, and it's available pretty much anywhere you can get a podcast. So uh, you can check that out. That drops uh, a new episode every Tuesday. And we also do a podcast, me and Jay do one together called Living Outside the Box. And that's just about all the weird stuff we do <laughs> in life and uh, just the kind of the different things we do. And I think that covers all the different ways that you can uh, catch up with me. Uh, so thanks for joining me and I'll see you guys next week.